All right, we've mentioned it a few times, but we're going to delve into it a little deeper now, and that's the Deshaun Watson situation in Cleveland. Now, he has a shoulder injury, and um, he was, you know, optimistic about playing all week, even though he wasn't really practicing. Um, But the feeling was he'd be able to play. And Sunday, before their game with the – who were they playing? The uh, Ravens? Yeah, Ravens. He went out and uh, warmed up and just didn't feel right. And you heard Randy Mueller say he he looked like he was wincing and just clearly and was not it, comfortable Randy. Yeah, right. throwing the football. And so Deshaun, even though he was cleared by the doctors, said, to, told the Browns he wasn't able to go, didn't feel like he was, you know, ready and uh, Kevin Stefanski, the head coach, let it be known to the media that that was the case. Here's what he said, Rob. He said yesterday, it, pretty much it was his call. So he was medically cleared to play. If he would have said, I'm good, he would have played? Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, let me uh, say this, Tony. I mean, he knows his body. He's played through serious pain before, very, very serious injuries. Um, it wasn't a matter of pain tolerance or anything. He just did not feel like he had his full faculties. So did he, that was the reporter, Tony Gross, who I I worked with. Yeah, you know Tony, right? Oh, yeah. He he was there when I was an intern at the Plain Dealer. Um, Let me tell you, all those writers in Cleveland and Detroit, they're like forever. Like, you know, there's certain places. Like, they never move on. Like There are guys there, Rob, that were covering high schools with me. And they were... 20 years older than me then. <laughs> and they're still there. Like, yeah. they, they, like Cleveland is one of those cities, just a ton of old-time writers, Chris. I had a, a, a partner there, Rob, and I'm, this will take some of the listeners just a little bit behind the curtain of what we do. And we cover high school sports together. And when I was at the Plain Dealer, Cleveland Plain Dealer, they put me out in a bureau. And so, you know... We had a bureau uh, on the, like, west of Cleveland, east of Cleveland, and south of Cleveland. And and covered, like, not just the suburbs, but out. So I was actually covering Akron, the Akron area. And so I covered Akron area high schools. This is before LeBron was in high school. Okay. But we covered, I covered it with a partner there. Covered, uh, that. that's when I covered Mike Vrabel when he was in high school. Um, Antoine Winfield when he was in high school. Two guys who went on to go pro. And then in the playoffs, you know, saw Earl Boykins, Ruben Patterson, but they were in Cleveland. Those are all guys that went to the uh, NBA, those two. But um, one of my partners who covered high schools with me, he was older than me, he, was, he, was, he did a great job. And he, Rob, he said he had grown up, and by this point he's like 40 years old, and I'm, I'm like 22 or something like that. Right. 21. And he was saying that his dream had always been to cover the Cleveland Indians, the baseball team. And he got the beat. Um, And after about two and a half months, he asked off. And it wasn't because he wasn't doing well. But as you know, Rob, I mean, that's every day at the ballpark. Writing every day. I mean, you know, you're there. If you don't, if you don't you're love there the game, you can't, PM, do you can't right, do you're it. You're there Chris. from 1 p.m. to like 11 p.m. Yep. At every the ballpark. Day. Yep. And he just was like, you know, I just didn't want that. I didn't want that to be my life. And, you know, by the time I was working with him and he's covering high schools, you know, he had, he played in a band. He, you know, he, he had a lot of other things he was doing. And so – I don't think he would have been able to do all that stuff had he stuck with that and covered Indy. So just a little, you know what that's like, Rob. I mean, covering the uh, pro beat, especially nowadays with Twitter and you're tweeting all the time, it's a, it is ra- around the clock work. Definitely a lot of work to do. Um, and I, I think people don't realize how much is put into it and how much you have to sacrifice. And you know this. There's a lot of sports writers, Chris, who are divorced. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a it, it is a casualty I had a friend, of the job. Rob, it's a, a casualty mutual of the friend. Job. I won't say who, but we both know him. 
He he. Now this was probably 15, 20 years ago. He told me this. He did like an unofficial count of all his friends in the business, and he had been in the business for years at this point. And he said uh, it was ninety four percent of his friends <laughs> were in divorced. sports writing were divorced. Yeah, yeah. I I don't but, doubt it. It's it's a, it's a big number. It's it's a really tough job, and I know a lot of guys when I worked in Detroit. Chris were divorced three and four times. They had, they had three. They were married three and four times. Wow. I'd just be like, wow, you were in love that many you, times. <laughs> you're traveling with the team. You're at every practice. Rob, my first day on the Cavaliers, and I was just young and a go get. You know, I, I, Rob, I, I went from covering high schools and essentially from high schools and doing a little work on the desk to covering the calves. And I didn't even think to ask for a raise. I just was like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I was just doing it. And I worked 188 straight days that year. Wow. Wow. Didn't days, even think, wow. I mean, it was just like, you know, in the summers back, I got, I was off six, seven, eight weeks in the summer. Cause I had so much comp time, you know, but yeah, I mean, I just went right through it, and you're traveling, you're at every game on the road, at home, you're at every practice. It 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 is an all. It's just an all encompassing thing. Right. But I want to say this pro team. Yep, about Deshaun and Chris. I've been critical of some of the stuff that he did and the, what he put himself through. A lot of it, I think is self inflicted, but I'm not going to be a guy who's going to tell him when he can play and when he can't. Because that is just something that we just do, no matter what. And we've seen it. I hate to keep bringing up Kevin Durant, but he was clear. Well, that, that, and that's like the worst okay, No, I know, example. but I'm just saying. Yeah. Like when no, people say, oh, yeah, saying. yeah, I'm just saying. Like people go, well, the doctor cleared him. Well, well Kevin Durant was cleared too, is, all I, is the point. And then Randy had the greatest one. Randy Mueller was just on. About Drew Brees pass, failing his physical in Miami, probably that, would have changed. Probably would have right. changed everybody. Nick Saban might have stayed in. Right? Who knows? You know what what like, yep. you don't even yep. know what would have happened, Chris. Randy Mueller might have won Executive of the Year three other <laughs> three more times. He might still be in the NFL, in the NFL right. as an executive. There's no telling. Nah, that's 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 right. Look, yeah, I'm not gonna kill Deshaun. Um, and Rob G, check because he played through when he was in Houston. Didn't he play through like a knee injury or something? Like he's shown some toughness and some willingness to play through pain before. But um, I, I'm not, you know, like you said, Rob, you don't know. I will just say this, though. There is a time to play through pain. Like I, I'm not one to be like, and I know everybody, nobody's 100%, you know, once the season starts. You know, we get all the cliches, but we, we understand the truth behind that. You're always going to have some aches and pains and be sore and all that. Everybody. But I also think there's a time when you are, you might be legitimately hurt, but you keep playing. I think there's a time for that. Um, I'm not going to say that's the time for Deshaun because I don't know what his, you know, how serious his injury is. And if he, bottom line is, if he can't throw, then obviously he doesn't need to be playing. But I'm just saying I'm not the one to be like, oh, if you're hurting, if you're in some pain, don't play. No, sometimes you, there's, you got some pain, but you can play through it. Um, and then there's times, Rob, when you just not only can't, but shouldn't. You know, and so, yes, I think the player has to be smart about situations like that. But I think, Rob, I think there's some guys that you have to say from themselves and be like, dude, I know you want to play. There is no way you can go out there tonight. And, and you know what? And it's then Joe, I, think, Rob, I, think, I think there's other guys that I, I, I think there's other guys that you you just like they they're exasperating because you like dude you can play you're fine and and they just will milk an injury or they just have an incredibly low threshold of pain or they feel like they have to be 110% before they will go through 
go and play or they can't be in any pain at all to play or they're worried about numbers or whatever it might be. So I think you got guys on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, and I, it's how, how do you read that, right? It's hard. And, and, that, and I, I think that's my issue is that you really can't read it. There's no reason, unless somebody is always and you just can't figure it out, and 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 then there might there has to be a track record for you to question. Somebody. I think that's it. You got to have. We've a, all like, talked about Anthony Davis, right? Right. You got to have like, a track record yeah. where where people can look back and go. Every time he falls down, he's like saying he's hurt. You know, like and right. maybe he's got some pain or whatever. But is he really hurt? And then other people. I I remember back in the days of uh, uh, Daryl Strawberry had uh, couldn't play. Chris, it might have been in a playoff series. And, of course, he had back surgery when the season was over. So people were right. saying he what, didn't want to play or came up with something, and then the guy had surgery, so then a lot of people had egg on their face. He did right. have something wrong with him. Right. So it's tough. And even we, we talk about Anthony Davis, who obviously a lot of people roll their eyes, you know, when he goes down and it seems, oh, here we go. Is it serious? He, he's always down. And, but yet the situation against Phoenix, he shouldn't have been out there. In the playoffs. Yeah, and he put and he probably put pressure times, on himself. Right. Yeah, and there's a, probably because of his past. But the the first year in L.A., Rob, he, you know, I think he wanted to impress LeBron, and, and obviously that was the knock on him. He He's never healthy and, and this and that. And he played the most games of his career and played through a lot of aches and pains that in New Orleans he wouldn't have played through. And so that's what I mean. Like, it's – you 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 have to be careful because you don't want to prejudge a guy and he really is hurt and you're forcing him out there. Um, and so, but I, I do think there's guys at all different ends of this spectrum. And so you just have to observe it and, and try to, you know, try to try to walk through it. All right. 